In this lesson, I am going to discuss properties of linear transformations. Here are some properties of linear transformations. First, any linear transformation maps the zero vector into the zero vector of the other vector space. Why is this true? Note that the zero vector is just zero times, let's say, a fixed vector v. However, zero here is just a scalar, so therefore this is zero times t of v. But remember that the zero scalar times any vector is always equal to the zero vector. So this is the zero vector in W. That proves the first property. Second, T of negative V is equal to negative T of V. This is true because negative V can be written as negative 1 times V. This is a property of vector spaces. And now we can pull out negative 1. Hence, this is now your negative t of v. Because of item 2, we can now write t of u minus v as t of u minus t of v. Before, in the definition of linear transformation, we can only do that if it's plus. But because we have shown this, we can now also distribute t over subtraction. By definition, u minus v is u plus negative v so therefore this is t of u plus t of negative v but t of negative v by 2 is equal to negative t of v this last property is just a generalization of properties 1 and 2 in the definition of linear transformation what is this saying if we're getting the image of a linear combination of vectors v1, v2, up to vk, what do we do? We always pull out our scalars and get the images of the vector. So that's why we have a1 times d of v1 plus a2 times the image of v2 and so on and so forth. Here is an application of the properties that we just discussed. Suppose that t of v minus u is equal to w1 and t of 2v minus u is equal to w2. We want to find t of v and t of u in terms of w1 and w2. Since we want to find t of v and t of u, we want to sort of split this up. From the first equation, t of v minus u equals w1, we write t of v minus u as t of v minus t of u. This is w1. The second equation, t of 2v minus u equals w2. We can also write t of 2v minus u as 2 times t of v minus t of u. This is just a system of linear equation, so therefore when I solve for t of u, I will subtract this. t of v minus 2 t of v is negative t of v. We have w1 minus w2. So therefore, t of v is equal to w2 minus w1. From this first equation over here, T of u is equal to T of v minus W1. But T of v is already W2 minus W1. So therefore, this is W2 minus 2 W1. And that is now your T of u. So for example, we want to show that this function that maps a vector xy to x plus 1y is not a linear transformation. To do that, let us get the image of the zero vector under the function t. The definition says that we obtain the image of a vector by simply adding 1 to the first coordinate and copying the second coordinate. So therefore, t of 0, 0 is equal to 
1, 0. However, if T is a linear transformation, we should have T of the 0 vector should go to the 0 vector in W. But here, this is the 0 vector in R2, but its image is not the 0 vector in R2. So therefore, this is not a linear transformation because this is not satisfied. Now suppose that we have a basis for V and we know the images of this basis elements under the linear transformation T. If that is the case, then we can compute T of V for every vector in V. Why is that? If V is in V, then we can write V as a linear combination of our basis elements. And from the property 4 that we just discussed, what is now T of V? T of V is equal to A1, T of V1, A2, T of V2, and so on up to AN, T of VN. We know what these T of V1, T of V2, T of VN are, and therefore, we can get our T of V. So hence, if we know what a linear transformation T does to each basis element of V, we know what T does to every vector in V. In other words, a linear transformation is determined completely by its action on a basis of V. For instance, I have a linear transformation wherein I only know where it takes the basis elements. Look at this one. This are your standard basis elements. Let me call this E1, E2, and E3. We know where the linear transformation is taking this basis element. We want to find T of 2, 3, negative 2. So first, we write 2, 3, negative 2 as a linear combination of our basis elements. This is 2E1 plus 3E2 minus... 2e3. So therefore, our t of 2, 3, negative 2 is equal to 2 times t of e1 plus 3 times t of e2 minus 2 times t of e3. And then it's simply a matter of substitution. This is 2 times T of E1 is 2, negative 1, 4, plus 3. T of E2 is 1, 5, negative 2, minus 2. T of E3 is 0, 3, 1. So therefore, this is equal to 4 plus 3, 7, negative 2 plus 15. 15 is 13 minus 6, so that's 7 also. Next, we have 8 minus 6 is 2 minus 2, 0. So therefore, 2 of 3, negative 2 is equal to 7, 7, 0. Now, suppose again that we have a basis for V and we get N vectors in W. W1 up to Wn are not necessarily distinct. So, what I am saying here is I have your basis elements. These are your basis elements in V. And then I have some elements here in W. Now suppose here, then there will be a linear transformation that takes VI to your WIs here. Let us consider the example that we had earlier. These are my basis elements. And I have vectors in R3. We want to know the action of T on every vector in R3. Meaning to say, I want to get a formula for T of V, where V is an arbitrary vector in R3. 
In order to do that, let us say first that V is A1, A2, A3. This is our arbitrary vector in R3. First, we have to write V as a linear combination of your basis elements. So that's A1, E1, A2, E2 plus A3, E3. And now we can get T of V. So remember, whenever you have a problem like this, you should always write your vector as a linear combination of your basis elements of V. And then get the image of that. So we have A1, T of E1. So this is just a generalization of this slide over here. Here we just looked for t of 2, 3, negative 2. Now we want to find the action of t on each vector in R3. So this is now a1, t of e1 is 2, negative 1, 4 plus e2, 1, 5, negative 2, plus e3, 0, 3, 1. And this is equal to 2a1 plus a2, negative a1 plus 5a2, plus 3a3, 4a1 minus 2a2 plus a3. So this is now the action of T on an arbitrary vector V. Here's another example. Suppose that we know the action of this linear transformation on this basis elements. 1 plus x, x squared, 1. Verify that this is a basis for P2. This one gives us the action or the image of t on this basis for p2 we want to know what it does to every vector in p2 so what would be an arbitrary vector in p2 it's a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 so it's of the form a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared we want to know where this polynomial goes under the function t. Before we can answer this, first we have to write this arbitrary element as a linear combination of your basis elements here. Now notice here that this is no longer the standard basis. We want to write this as a linear combination of 1 plus x, x squared, and 1. I will just write x as a linear combination of this. It's equal to 1 plus x minus 1, correct? And then x squared is good because it's already here. So hence, this is a0 plus a1 times 1 plus x minus a1 plus a2x squared. So now I was able to write this as a linear combination of 1, 1 plus x, and x squared. And therefore, our t of a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared is equal to a0 minus a1 times t of 1 plus a1 t of 1 plus x plus e2 t of x squared. So it's t of 1 is 0, 0, 1. So times a0 minus a1, that's 0, 0, 0, a0 minus a1. Plus t of 1 plus x is 1, 0, 0. That's a1, 0, 0, 0 plus t of x squared is equal to 0, 1, 1, 0. That's 0, a2, a2, 0. This is now equal to a1, 
a2, a2, a0 minus a1. Suppose that we have two linear transformations from V to W. Let's call those L and T. If we add L and T, they will again be a linear transformation. And if we multiply any linear transformation by a scalar, it will also be a linear transformation. What is this theorem saying? This is saying that if we collect the set of all linear transformations from V to W, they will form a vector space under function addition and scalar multiplication. Moreover, the composition of two linear transformations is again a linear transformation.